Ah. That's quite a lot of stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video, which as you can see is a bit different from the usual stuff. Because today is the day where I'm going to start building my dream setup. And an exciting one at that. The goal of the new setup is to basically cleanse my desk from everything except two monitors, a keyboard, mouse and headset. As well as optimizing the way on how I record my videos, how I can get the maximum performance out of gaming streams. Yeah, I'll start again, don't worry. And to archive data. That being said, what you see right here is only the first part of this setup. These are the parts from a virtualization server, which will run on Proxmox, a lightweight Type 1 KVM hypervisor platform. All of the parts have been chosen with something in mind. And just so you know, it's not complete just yet, but more on this later. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like. And if you like this sort of content, then you should also consider subscribing. Thank you and let's go. Let's start off with the specs. From a CPU, I chose a Ryzen 7 5700G on top of an MSI B500 Gaming Plus, and it features everything I need. That being supported clock speeds, I.O. and of course the general connectivity. For the memory, I went with 32GB DDR4, though I might bump it up to 64 if necessary. For the storage pools, I'm for once going to recycle some old 1TB hard drives from my old PC, as well as add these three 4TB drives, which will run with RAID Z or RAID Z1. That way I can use 8 of the 12TB and take one drive failure at a time. I'm also going to utilize my old GTX 1080, which I kept as a backup to run DaVinci Resolve with H.264 hardware acceleration. For future recordings, I also bought the Elgato CamLink Pro, which features 4 HDMI ports that support 1080-60fps or 4K-30fps each. And I have literally no idea if it will even run on Linux at all, since I couldn't really find anything. Its poor naming doesn't really help with researching. Guess we'll find out then. And last but not least, let's talk cases and the rack. I basically just went for the cheapest options, which could fulfill my requirements. They're different on purpose, since there are not that many reviews for them, and I thought to myself, why not try both? The upper one is the Intertech IPC4U-K-439L, and it's for my gaming PC. IO-wise, it has two USB 3.0 ports in the front, and already has two 80mm fans mounted on the inside. Form factor wise, you should be able to fit most hardware in it, but be aware of the height. That counts for both cases by the way. The case below is for the Proxmox server, and it's an Intertech 4080S. It comes with a lockable front, a very large drive bay, as well as one adapter if you want to mount drives on the right. You can easily hot swap that way for example. Starting off with the server, I started off with preparing the main board by adding the CPU, the cooler and RAM. The next step was to prepare the case. I tried out the positioning of the two PCIe cards, removed the metal backplate from the slots and also mounted the server rails, since both systems are kind of heavy. Now's the time to put everything in place, connect the cables and add the HDDs. I initially tried out the HDD cage, however my graphics card is just the tiniest amount too long and the cable management is not ideal that way. I'm going to order some more HDD adapters and put them in the front at a later time, but let's continue for now. Last but not least, I took the case and slid it in with the rails. If you don't need to access it anymore, then you can also start fixing it in place. However, I won't do that for now. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what fixed it, maybe it didn't work because I connected the DisplayPort cable after it already turned on or something, but there we go. Okay, so now the same process for my gaming PC, but I'm doing that off cam. Let's just move on to the connectivity. See, my desk is here and my rack is over there. A remote connection with my surface and a docking station would technically be possible. I of course want to utilize my full 144Hz, as well as have basically no input lag whatsoever. So how do we solve this? 
That's where those cables come in. I ran two 20 meter display port and one standard CAT7 network cable all the way across my room down to my rack. What really stands out here are the display board cables, which are so called active cables. The difference here is that active cables have electronic chips built into them, which allows them to carry their signal over way longer distances without any loss. And while they are still very pricey, for these smaller distances they are still cheaper than optical ones. Ok, but what is the network cable for then? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is a USB 2.0 KVM extender, which carries my USB devices from my desk, first to this docking station in my rack, up to my PC, and it should do that without any additional latency. Yeah, we'll see if that actually holds true. Two things about these devices. Why only USB 2.0? Well, most importantly, it's about cost. USB 3.0 extenders, especially the ones that also support backwards compatibility to 2.0 and 1.0, are heckin' expensive. And given that most peripherals like mice, keyboards and headsets are 2.0 anyway, it should be enough. The second thing that you need to consider if you want to buy one of these devices is how you want to connect them. For example, my model, even though it has a standard interface, does not support network switches in between, since the interfaces communicate with different protocols. So if you want to connect your keyboard and mouse to your PC over a network switch, then make sure to do your research if it is supported. And yeah, that's about it for this video. Two rack mounted systems, one of them directly connected to my monitors on my desk, a dual recording and streaming setup, and once I'm done cleaning up my desk, my personal perfect gaming setup will be complete. So if you've liked this video then please make sure to show it with a like, and while you're down there why not also subscribe to the channel as well. If you still hear me say this then come on, just do it. Right here or here you can already go ahead and watch another video. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.